And basically the goal is, you know, I love to speak things into existence. That's a big thing on our team. Make a push towards qualifying for the 2024 Olympics. Like, you're not going to do it unless you think you have a shot. And I'm going to keep telling myself that every day until I get to that point. Um, but if it doesn't happen, I at least gave it a shot. So. drives you every day because obviously running isn't a glamorous sport like it's like no one in their right mind is going to say okay I'm just going to go run eight miles because that sounds fun so like what what kind of drives you every day yeah I mean I think it's just I've almost gotten like a rhythm now where this is just part of my daily life and it's something that I just truly enjoy doing you know if I'm ever like you know on like our breaks after the season if I'm not running I'm almost like craving to run you know so um just running every day has just become such a, a natural habit for me to do on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, I guess like the driving motivation behind training and, and you know, going for it is just, I really just want to see where I can take myself and see how far I can get in the sport. Um, it's something that I really liked doing early on in, in middle school and high school. Just, you know, like, let's see how hard you can run on any given day. So what would you say your favorite quote is? Favorite quote, um, sheesh, uh, that's kind of a tough one. I, I do have a couple, um, that like I've just stored away, um, that like resonate with me. I don't know. I don't, I'm not really like a big, like drawing inspiration from quotes kind of person, but, um, I actually do have, um, a saying that's tattooed on my chest, kind of around my ribs, kind of like a mantra. Um, that I've been kind of having for, you know, all of my sports career. It's just siempre adelante, which means always forward in Spanish. Um, and then I have the Basque translation right under it. And it's basically just, um, it's basically, uh, it comes from Father Junipero Serra, who, um, for anybody outside of California wouldn't know, he's the guy that founded all the, the big missions or the big churches in California. And, he always, he, that was kind of his motto of just like, it's, oh, you're always going forward no matter what. Like, even if you're failing, you're continuing to move forward in, in the direction that you want to go. And, um, you know, for me, like ever since I joined the post-collegiate ranks, it's, or, you know, run on a professional circuit, I've failed 99% of the time. You know, I've won one race out of heat two um, in an indoor meet, you know? So like, I've always, you know, on paper, I've always failed, but I've always found a reason to keep pushing and keep moving forward um, in order to find that success that I've been striving for. You say a typical day uh, looks like me, like mileage and just training wise? Yeah, I mean, the summer's been interesting just because I've been racing so much, so the mileage has definitely been down, and the day-to-day -day has been tough, and obviously we've gone through a coaching transition, so things are switched up a little bit. But I would say, uh, let's you know, let's say for example, these past two weeks, I hit, I've been averaging, let's say like 70s, 65, 70s recently, um, and it kind of depends on the day as to what I'm doing from a running perspective, but basically I'm up, you know, around like seven o'clock, I drink a coffee, I eat, a very light breakfast and then you know I'm, depending on whether we have practice or not I'm rolling out and getting getting my butt out the door to go run um, I'll do a workout on the track or I'll you know do an easy run today was just an easy run by myself so I just ran up close to the flat irons and ran back down and into my strides and, you know after that it's kind of up in the air um, Tuesday Fridays Monday Tuesday Fridays we have weights so I'm usually just getting ready to um, go to weights whether that's you know i'm eating lunch i'm taking a nap reading you know killing killing a couple hours and then you know i'll go to weights or um i'll do my double right after and then pretty much just coming home and, and eating dinner and then just getting ready for the next day whether that's hopping in the norma tech or an ice bath or you know rolling out a bit before i go to bed um so and obviously like i live with um i live with four other guys i live with cam jeff uh, Goose and Kevin, our video intern, and so we usually like to sync up dinner and stuff like that. And we have a pretty nice backyard here, so we just we usually just chill out here at night, especially when the, when the summer weather's really nice and you know it's like 70 degrees at eight o'clock. So it's a pretty uh, 
sometimes it can get pretty boring, but you know, I keep myself busy. I, I've been reading a little bit and um, I, have a, I have a big passion for drawing. And so I've been drawing a lot of, of footwear and sneakers and shoes recently. So yeah. um, that, that takes up a lot of my time outside of the actual running. What advice would you give the younger self? Just keep going. Like what you're doing is worth doing. And um, like it's going to be difficult, it's going to be hard, but just continue to have fun. I, I don't really regret anything I've done or second guess anything I've done. Um, get, getting to this point, I think every decision, I, I think if I had made other decisions leading up to this point, I might not be in the position I am now. If I decided to go to a better school for running on paper, then maybe I you know, would have checked all my boxes as you know, maybe I would have broken 14, maybe I would have qualified for the NCAA championships. Maybe I would have done some really cool things. Maybe I'd be a better runner right now, but that potentially would not have led me to be on the team that I truly enjoy being on, you know? So I think it's just kind of leading into all the decisions that you make, knowing that, you know, there might not be any kind of like specific plan set out for you, but um, just as long as you lead into those decisions and know that you're making the right decisions for yourself, it's going to work out for you in the end. Yeah, so you mentioned that you're running in the Guardian Mile. What are your kind of thoughts and goals for that race? Every goal, the goal for every race is to win. Uh, I, I go into every single race giving myself a chance to win. Uh, as I like mentioned earlier, the, the first big race I ever won was my high school cross country championship, like the league championship when I, had, you know, on paper had no chance of winning, and I just showed up and I gave it my best effort, and I just had a, had a good day and I won. So. Um, ever since then, I have gone into every single race thinking I could win. I have raced against Galen Rupp. I have raced against Yumi Pichalcha. I have raced against Evan Jager. I have raced against Mark Scott. Every single race. It's like, yeah, go see what you can do. Maybe you can win it. And sometimes I race a bit dumber than I do in, in, in some of those and others, you know. Um, but, you know, to go into a race and think that you're not going to win or don't, to not give yourself that shot, you've already lost. So as ridiculous as that may seem on paper against some of the guys that I've raced against, um, that's always the goal. It's like, if you can find yourself in the position to win, you better be ready to take advantage of that. So um, this this is no different. You know, I'm going up against guys that were in the U.S. Olympic Trials 1500 final, and they're really good runners. They have all run under the Olympic standard 335, and my PR is 344. I don't think, you know, on paper anybody thinks I have a shot, but I'm going to go in there uh, knowing that I can give myself a chance to win. Yeah. Uh, yes, my next question is, why do you think people have gravitated towards the MNLE? Because, I mean, there's other clubs like Brooks Beast who have, like, athlete special that also do the YouTube and everything. So why do you think, like, I mean, I know especially, like, at, like at the high school level, I mean, when I go on runs with just some, like, the local runners, like, half the people run 10 men gear, whether yeah. it's, like, or a shirt. Like, why That's do you awesome. think that is? Yeah, I mean... I think basically what it was, and I kind of, I kind of got lucky where I showed up right at like the, essentially the social media boom of Tin Man, um, where I kind of caught on early to what they were doing and I liked it and I somehow got on the team before a lot of other people figured out about it. I think it was just, I, I think really a lot of people resonated with just a group of guys who were willing to be a bit more um, transparent and authentic with uh, their following than than some other professional runners were and, um, and you know you could define that in any way you want um, of what transparency and authenticity means but I think just giving a little bit of a glimpse inside of uh, what we were doing um, you know like saying our goals and saying what we wanted to do in the sport really caught the eye of a lot of people and a lot of people were willing to follow along with that journey to a point where we had you know a pretty, pretty big following and, and we continued to grow over the years. Yeah.